welcome folks, you're gonna still make your event here. Ever since Al Gore invented the internet, people have been using it to meet each other, distribute ideas, distribute pornography, and distribute regular videos. This new technology has leveled the playing field, and people are saying that the gatekeepers of Hollywood are dead. Today's guest, Todd Cobry, is holding a bloody axe over their crumpled bodies. Welcome to Butter City, Todd Cobry. Hey, Dan. Hey, Todd. How's it going? Not too bad, man. We brought special mugs in for you. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. So you have an interesting kind of history. I mean, you work locally kind of as a mm -hmm. production coordinator. You've right. worked at all levels of production. But kind of your side job, and probably the thing you like doing the most, is working as a director. Correct, yeah. The music videos, I know you're a fan of horror, yeah. um, but let's kind of talk about how, how did you get into filmmaking? Well, you know, I've been making films, videos since I was a kid. Um, I grew up, I mean, that was my hobby. I was watch films, make films, videos, things like that, and uh, kind of moved out here to Minnesota. Went to school to get a practical degree, and then at the end of that practical degree, I threw it away and started uh, you know, working as a production assistant in town on what was videos. What school degree in? Uh, that'd be accounting. It's Got a accounting. pretty exciting degree, um, <laughs> but I, I was working my way through school as a production assistant on commercials and, and music videos and stuff like that. And so I kind of learned. I never went to film school, so I kind of, you know, I took one class and kind of taught myself the rest and kind of learned on set. And so, you know, you just start meeting people and uh, with like-minded, you know, ideas and working with them. So I know that I mean, your house is like a museum too. <laughs> To horror films yeah, and stuff like right. that. I mean, so early on you've done some kind of some zombie stuff, mm -hmm, and we'll show yeah. some of that stuff yeah. later. If you've done music videos too, you're yeah. kind of all over the map. But um, when it came to like your early films, when you were making stuff, I mean, like probably my favorite movie is Airplane. Right. So my first couple of like student films, like in high school, I'm talking student films, were like Airplane kind of ripoffs or that right, kind of sure. humor stuff. Was it was it always blood and guts for Todd Cobra? <laughs> pretty much. It's blood and guts and comedy, and uh, when the two can be together, you know, it's even better. But, you know, I grew up watching uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Romero's films, you know, Last House on the Left, which that's is, classic. you know, yeah, that's not Sound of Music. So, <laughs> I mean, that's definitely where my influences lie. But you were saying that uh, Last House on the Left was a morality tale. Yeah, I think it's a morality <laughs> tale. I, I doubt a lot of people else would. I also know, you know, it was based on The Virgin Spring, which is a Berg, Bergman film. And uh, so it's like, I see a, a, a sort of artistic side to the, the horror genre, and you know a lot of people kind of chuckle at me. Well, what's interesting, I mean, that, and we should say that was a Wes Craven yes. film, yes. Last House on the Left. What's interesting about horror is that um, a good horror movie is always original, mm -hmm. and it's always derivative. I mean, you're always pulling, there's a kind of an established sure. thing there that you're going with, and you always try to kind of, um, you want to pay respect to all the greats who came before you in some way, and then you always want to push it a little a little well, further. Yeah, I mean, and I would say I, uh, the realization I've made in the last few years is that great horror movies aren't necessarily original, actually, at all. I mean, lots of times, you know, like a, a French film it was called How Tension came out, and uh, it's about as derivative as, I mean, it's just really well done. You know, right. it's like nothing groundbreaking, but the way it's shot and the way it's paced, it's just really well done. So. Get this, I'm about to compare it to a musical. Strange thing, I mean, it's <laughs> the thing about musicals, though, yeah. because musicals is very common, but in the first couple of minutes, to know how it's going to end. Right. You know, the guy's crying at the beginning because she dies at the end. Exactly. But what you're there for mm -hmm. is the ride. Is the big numbers. Yeah. And, you know, and with horror, it's always like, how are you going to kill 22 people in the first seven <laughs> minutes of this picture? Right. Yeah. But, I mean, we can jump back to the horror thing, but I kind of want to just kind of do a survey of everything. So, you know, you, you're making your movies, and, I mean, early on, were you, did you know that you wanted to eventually do some music videos? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to have grown up. Um, you know, in the 90s and the 80s and not be influenced by music videos. I mean, sure. I think it's all over. I mean, you see it everywhere now, and I don't necessarily think that's a good thing, but, um, you know, I mean, I grew up, I love music. Um, the, one of my teachers was a music video instructor, and uh, particularly, I basically just do music videos for bands I really like, and so it kind of works out that way. There's a band I like, like, that's a project I want to invest my time in, so... Oh, cool. Yeah. Let's take a look at a video you did for a uh, Minneapolis band called The Owls. Great. We could take the hard road 
Hello, and if you're just joining us, we're here with Minneapolis filmmaker Todd Cobry. We're looking at some of his work and talking about independent filmmaking. Now, when I use the, fra the phrase independent filmmaking, I'm not talking about Warner Independent. Right, which yeah. basically these massive studios who yep. have kind of created an independent label. I'm talking about real independent filmmaking, which I know that you just kind of got to scratch and do whatever you have to do to pull together these projects, yep. like that video. I mean, you shot that on 35 millimeter film, print to process, that's at least $1.50 a foot. Right. How much did it cost? That's the secret we never get, but a lot, a lot, a lot less than that. It was, yeah, because I don't, I don't know if all the film was, mm -hmm. but I'm, I think a large portion of it was um, uh, all short the, ends. Yeah, all the film was donated. It was short ends from a, uh, uh, the, the camera assistant who worked on the film is a close friend of mine, and his name's Michael Linquist. He's a great DP, and uh, he worked as an AC on some major motion pictures, and he just keeps, you know, keeping the short ends, and he, uh, he gave them to me. That's excellent. Yeah. And then, you know, there was quite a bit of visual effects you saw in there, mm -hmm. too. I mean, yeah, I mean, pulling together the crew and all the posts, that, that's a pretty expensive video. It is. It's definitely an expensive video. I mean, if they were going to pay for all that, it was you know, yeah. a lot of money. But, um, you know, I mean, the thing with this is the Owls, um, I've worked with Allison and Brian before. They've done music for some of my films, and uh, a lot of my friends that are also filmmakers or graphic designers are friends with them as well. So a lot of people came together for the project and wanted to help. Um, Brady, uh, my friend who produced it, uh, was able to bring in some other people. So a lot of people kind of jumped on board. What I find is, you know, in this town, a lot of people work on commercials and things like that. And when there is kind of a creative project, they can jump on, whether they're not getting paid or they're getting paid. A lot of times they will, and sure. uh, especially, you know, if you have a good relationship with them. 
It is a pleasure to get the opportunity to work on something that you just like. Right. Because yep. sometimes you're doing a commercial for something and you're like, you know what, I don't really care if these people buy more milk right. or whatever or get a lottery ticket yeah. or eat your sandwich. Exactly. I mean, be, being like this independent, I guess, it's, yeah. it's got pluses and minuses. Obviously, there's budgets, constrictions, and yeah. you can't always do you what you want to do. You know. I, I do. But, you know, I do the projects I want to do, and I'm passionate about all of them. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's the life to live if you can, which is great because you don't have to go to Hollywood. You can fail right here. I can fail right here. <laughs> Nobody can watch my stuff here. It's perfect. <laughs> right. Um, so kind of talk about like, you know, trying to be competitive, though, in a market where you are forced to work. And I mean, the internet really has helped kind of close that gap. I mean, you can compete against other people. I mean, the 48-hour film festival, you've done some stuff with that, I know, um, which is an international contest. But talk about the Xbox 360 contest. And um, Well, uh, it was. For the Xbox 360, when it was launching, they uh, they had this kind of viral marketing campaign, something about Hex 168, and I never quite fully understood it. But basically, I think Hex 168 is I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> I was, thought I knew. It was a symbol of some variety. Yeah, I mean, the, it was kind of you know viral marketing where you know they just wanted kids to come and kind of get involved with this launch, and uh, it, basically there were. You could do something that involved one person, something that involved, I think, six, and then something that involved 30. And uh, then they would pick a winner from each category or whatever. And um, we obviously were like, well, let's do the 30. And me, being that way, I was like, well, if you're going to get all these people together, they have to be zombies. Sure. And uh, so the contest was essentially, you know, make this video, put it on the website, and people are supposed to vote for it. But uh, Kids today know a lot about computers and how to cheat. Apparently, there was mass cheating and people were hacking and writing programs that I don't know anything about. And uh, so eventually, it just went to a panel of judges. And our video, which was uh, zombies playing dodgeball, you know, I kind of, like I said, I, I really like comedy, I like horror, so they usually kind of meet in between. And uh, we were selected as one of the, the winners, and they flew us out to LA, and we went to the Xbox premiere and saw all these. Gamers and stuff like that, and you know, for me, it wasn't necessarily about, you know, the going out and the gaming experience. I do play video games, but I just see these you contests. Have an Xbox I do. Now. I we won 30 Xboxes. That was kind of the plus. <laughs> they gave all of us one before it came out. But uh, you know, it, contests for me are just kind of another way to, you know, there's a deadline, so projects have to get done, and people that come on on board are aware of it. And it's just a way to kind of keep doing projects and um, you know get out there. It's funny because it was a local producer I was talking to, as I'm wont to do. No, but I was talking to a producer, right. and she was like, you know, you know, the 48-hour film festival. We make a movie in two days. She goes, why do we need a contest to do this? Yeah. Why don't we just Why yeah, don't we just decide to write something and, and go make it? Yep. And then the, another contest that you did more recently was actually for the Grindhouse films. Correct. Yeah. Uh, South by Southwest um, ran a contest. The film Grindhouse is, you know, a combination of Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino. Both made an 80-minute film or 90-minute film, and they were putting it together as a double feature, like they used to do in 70s Grindhouse, you know, cinemas, uh, which would play exploitation films. In the actual film, they are playing trailers for fake movies, fake exploitation films. Uh, Rob Zombie was doing one, Eli Roth, Edgar Wright, who did Shaun of the Dead, and. Um, so South by Southwest ran a competition to you know, drum up some publicity uh, where they asked independent filmmakers to make their own for uh, fake movies. And I had just finished doing another project, and someone sent me the email, and they're like, hey, we should have done this instead, and the deadline's in two weeks. And I sent them right back. I was like, oh, we're doing it. He's like, yeah, I'm out. Good luck. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, I mean, an exploitation trailer contest, it's just something I couldn't pass up. Totally. And, uh, so I, it, it ended up having a lot of people making some great, some great films. And well, we'll, let's take a look at the trailer you made. Sure. We'll talk about production day after, after we watch this. Sounds good.
You know, Myron, the producer always tells me not to drink before the show. I never listen. That was actually the trailer that you did yeah. for the Xbox 360 yes. one. That was the, uh, the zombie dodgeball. And actually, I was in that. You were. You were one of the zombies. We needed, you know, 30 people, and you were one of them. Cut out on yeah. the cutting room floor. I did I get an so. Xbox, though. Yeah, you did, and a trip. And a trip yeah. to California. So it worked out. So that one was really, I mean, remember we all met in a park and you had makeup artists there just applying oatmeal. Yep. Willy nilly. Yeah. And the blood rig. I mean, that was, a, that was, we shot that pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, that whole thing was put together in literally um, just a little over 24 hours. Me and I co directed that with a friend of mine, Was Berkeley. And uh, he told me about the competition and I was like, oh, we should do it. This, this, and this. And we literally were at a Perkins um, talking, figuring out a shot list and calling everybody we knew to get people there. And, you know, it's just, I really do like this community because you can pull something like that off. It's crazy. But, you know, I mean, we had enough people come out and talented people to work on it and to be in it. So, and then, you know, kind of continuing on with this mm -hmm. competitive filmmaking, you made the Grindhouse trailer. Correct. And then, talk about production day, and then, you know, what, what became of that trailer? Well, the production of it, I, you know, as soon as I decided I was going to do it, I knew that I needed help for something like this. You know, the early stuff that I would do, I would produce it all, direct it, write it, everything, and what I realized is that the creative side would really suffer because you spend all your time answering emails, making phone calls, and then all of a sudden the shoot day's there and you're like, oh, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. People wonder what a producer does, and that's what a producer does. It keeps the director creative. He, he does. He I mean, he really allows the director to do what he does, and Brady Kiernan is someone I've been working with a lot recently, and we've, we've worked well together. And so I instantly went to Brady and asked him if he wanted to be a part of it, and he did. And he pulled together, you know, I originally thought, like, oh, we'll do this down and dirty. Me and Wilson Webb, who I've worked with on the Owls and on this, you know, we'll grab a camera, we'll go shoot some things, we'll have some blood. And then, uh, you know, I sat down and wrote the, the script, and I realized it would be a little more involved than that. Um, actually, the first thing we got was Chris Ballas, who's the makeup guy. So the makeup right. ended up being great. He actually, you know, he's such a great guy, where he's like, oh, I need to be involved with it. That's and like, what are his makeup credits? I mean, like, Schwarzenegger. I mean, yeah, this exactly. guy does, like, yeah, I mean, he's a Hollywood big yeah, shot as far so, as I mean, makeup Having goes. him, you know, it's like it gives it, an, and, you know, he's like, he supplied all this stuff, these fake chests, blood, and stuff. I, I, don't, I don't know. You can ask Brady, but I don't think we gave him any money. So, I mean, I mean, he's a great guy. But Brady pulled together, you know, we had a crew of 25, 30 people. I mean, they were all running around. We had zombies. We were out in a farmhouse. It was his uncle's, and it's, it was covered, and it was 30 to, you know, negative 30. At the end of the shoot, there was frozen blood everywhere. I, we spent a week, you know, scraping it up. It was pretty hilarious. You finish it? Yes. And then what happened to it? Well, uh, this is Splice time. Here. Yeah, Splice Here is the local post house, and they, um, they gave us a sound mix, some graphic design, and an editing. It uh, was done by Sam Hine. And we finished it. We sent it off. And suddenly, all these videos started showing up on YouTube. And we didn't put ours up right away because we didn't know the rules. And you know, a couple of them started to get a lot of buzz. And then we kind of late, we put ours up. It was called The Dead Won't Die. And so we were a little nervous. We didn't think we were going to be a finalist because it started to seem like. Can we still see Dead Won't Die on YouTube now? Yes. Is that still available? Yep. You just search for The Dead Won't Die. Um, but anyways, we ended up getting a call um, from the executive producer of Grindhouse. Her name's Sandra Condito. And told we're us, name dropping now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she told us we were one of the finalists and we were going to screen at South by Southwest, which is what we thought the award was. And so we went down and, uh, you know, we got to tour Troublemaker Studios, which is Rodriguez's place, and see all the sets and stuff from Grindhouse, which was great. Uh, you know, we got screened at his panel at South by Southwest. Just going to South by Southwest was a great experience yeah, for me. Totally. I'd never been to like a big film festival. Then they, uh, you know, invited us to the world premiere of Grindhouse, and we got to, I got to meet Kurt Russell. That was the biggest dream come true. Cool. That's the biggest thing that's ever happened in my life. You know, my wedding, <laughs> escape from New York. Meeting Snake. Yeah, meeting Snake. I, you know, it depends on which day for the ranking. But uh, that was, you know, if that was so surreal. Snake Pliskin come to your exactly. wedding. Exactly. I kept waiting to get kicked out, but so we, we did have a lot of success from that, and that's, uh, you know, that was a lot of fun. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the clip that you made that went into competition for the Grindhouse okay. movies. Uh, let's take a look at that. They killed her family. They stole her freedom. 
Why are you keeping her alive? That bitch is gonna breed him. They even stole her womanhood. <laughs> but she would have her revenge. The dead won't die. We're gonna get those fuckers! No. It's too dangerous. The film they didn't want you to see. With violence so extreme. So sadistic. It has been banned in over 30 countries. The dead won't die. Tiffany! Amber! Let's go! The dead won't die. If you are upset by extreme violence and explicit sex, then this film is not for you. But if you think you can sit through the film Doug Bradley of the Midian Times called the most depraved motion picture I have ever seen, then be prepared. As this theater will not be giving refunds to those patrons unable to make it through the most brutal and controversial film ever made. The dead won't die. Rated X. No minors will be admitted under any circumstances. We're back here in Butter City with filmmaker Todd Colbury talking about competitive filmmaking and music videos and the madness that is in his brain. <laughs> so Todd, uh, you know, it looks like the video was treated, the film was treated, kind of gave it that rough appearance. Yep. I mean, the editing, the stars over the breasts, that's <laughs> straight out of a kind of 70s yeah. grindhouse slash Ex well, exploitation yeah. films, really. I mean, that was the idea. I mean, the, you know, it's supposed to be a, a genre film from a different time, the 70s. And so I would have loved to have shot it on reversal film, you know, an even more washed out, um, desaturated type yeah. stock. But we didn't have that free stock. Again, this was all stuff that we had collected in short ends and things like that. And so after it was made, it was, again, at Splice here, uh, a guy by the name of Brian Olson. He, we treated the film, desaturated it, washed it out a little bit, and we added some, some distress. Some distress. Yep. So, um, I mean, now I know you've, you've had a couple of things. You've made these couple of things now. I mean, it's kind of, I know it's time to get back to work. Right. As far as, you know, the, paying the bills and stuff. But, I mean, what are your, what's next for you? What are your next plans? Do you have anything in the works? Yeah, well, we're, we're actually work. I mean, we had a lot of success with The Dead Won't Die. Um, you know, it, it's got a lot of hits on YouTube and a lot of people interested in it. And so we're working on turning that into a feature. Kind of the, when I shot the trailer, it's kind of a film idea I had had, but I had never written the script. So writing the trailer was kind of a neat, or a neat way to get all the juicy points out. Sure. And well, after that, that... That bitch is going to breed them. Yes, exactly. And so after that, I went, I went out and uh, I wrote the, you know, a full treatment. And uh, I'm working with a screenwriter to, uh, to turn it into a full feature. And we've, you know, we're trying to raise some money for that right now. You are? Okay, I was going to yeah. ask you that. If, you tend to write, I have quite a bit of control of the script yeah. when you do stuff. Uh, you know, it's, ordinarily I do stuff that I've written myself. Um, would I'd, you do stuff you hadn't? I would. It would be difficult. I would need probably, I mean, I would definitely like to try it. Um, but uh, I usually have a lot of say over things like that. And as long as I have some say over the creative, I'm, I'm fine with that. And the idea with this is I don't, fit, you know, I don't think I'm that great of a writer. You know, frankly, I think I can come up with a pretty good story. So I'm bringing in a screenwriter who is a good writer, to do that. And then, you know, we'll probably sit and brainstorm over uh, you know, scenes and things like right. that. Um, and is it, do you think that's going to kind of be the road you go down? Will yeah. Will kind of be horror? Well, I mean, obviously that's, you know, I grew up loving that. That's what I would like to do. Uh, it's weird that I've kind of been, I'm not even a success, and I've been pigeonholed as kind of the <laughs> horror guy. That's why, I, you know, I do things like, um, you know, the, the short we did for the 48 hour, that one was, you know, a comedy. This group of people that I work with, we do a lot of comedy. The music video, um, you know, I, I do do a lot of other things, but I, that's always what I come back to because, you know, I enjoy it. And um, who's the group you work with? Do you guys have a... Uh, we call ourselves Central Services. And do you guys have a um, website? We do not have a website. Aren't okay. we so behind the times? Well, I thought we <laughs> have a website. So, um, I mean, as far as when it comes to, like, writing your own stuff, is it like you're just running along and then suddenly a script pops in your head? Well, I mean, for the, 
the stuff that I do strictly by myself, yeah, it's usually a project that I've been thinking about for a long time. And uh, then I go through and do an outline process and go with scenes. And then I go through and flesh it out. Cool. Um, so if we want to check out your work, we can catch you on YouTube? Yes, you the can. The Dead Won't Die? The Dead Won't Die. Can we still die. see Zombie Dodgeball anywhere? Uh, you can see it on my MySpace page, actually. Excellent. Look for Todd Cobra. Correct. MySpace. Well, that's kind of all the time we have mm -hmm. for today. Cool. We'll talk more after, but uh, I want to thank you for coming by to Butter City. Thanks for having me. Hey, it was fun. All right. Thanks for joining us on Butter City. You can keep up with us on the net at buttercity.com. We'll see you. Thanks. Support for Butter City is provided by